Hello everyone, I am Johanna from the UN Innovation Network. Thank you for joining us for this third webinar in our Fundamentals of Blockchain Learning series today. And in this series, we're trying to introduce you a little bit more to blockchain or distributed ledger technologies and give you a sense of how they work, how they can be applied to the work of the UN and explore in later uh, sessions, things like cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance as well. In the first session that we ran as part of this learning series, we talked about the real, the basics of blockchain, the fundamentals. What are distributed ledger technologies? How can they relate? Like, how do they relate to digital rules and smart contracts? Uh, what is this whole thing about trust and immutability and transparency that we always hear when talking about blockchain? So we talked about that. And then in the second session, uh, we had a colleague from the JRU join us to um, go a little bit deeper into what are some of the benefits of blockchain uh, and what are some of the challenges that it presents. So that's kind of how far our little learning journey has come to date. And today we are really excited to dive a little bit deeper into the actual applications of blockchain, specifically in the UN context. And we've chosen three case studies for you based on what colleagues who joined the UN blockchain group actually said they were most interested in. Um, I am going to introduce you to our presenters now and then tell you a little bit about how this session will run. Uh, we are joined today by Marina Petrovic from UNDP. Marina is an alternative finance and technology expert with UNDP in Istanbul, and I believe she's part of the alternative finance lab. And she will be talking to us about her experience from a blockchain project uh, transmitting remittances in Serbia. And then we have Maurizio Gazzola. He's joining us from UNRICT in Vienna, where he's the chief of the Strategic Technology Solutions Division. And Maurizio will introduce a case study on land registration that OIT, OICT is running in collaboration with UN Habitat in Afghanistan. And finally, we have uh, Rago Nala Botula from WFP. Uh, Rago is a new ventures consultant at WFP's Innovation Accelerator in Munich. And he will share more about a project that WFP is running to streamline logistics processes in the Djibouti corridor. Um, so these are our presenters for the day. And here on the next slide, you'll see an agenda of how we want to run this webinar. It's run a little bit different to our regular webinars. Typically we have uh, an, uh, you know, presentations and plenary, and then we take your questions and answers. Today, we really wanna try and make it a little bit more attractive. And we're going to hear very brief presentations in plenary now and then invite you to decide if you which of these case studies you'd like to hear more about in a breakout session we'll have a chance to engage with our presenters one-on-one -on -one. and for that this is the, the technologically challenging part of the day if you think blockchain is hard this is going to be the real hard part we'll later on ask you to rename yourself in zoom um, you can do that in the participant panel there's a more field next to your name you click on it you can rename um, and we'll ask you to put in front of your name what case study you'd like to learn more about in the breakout session. So either put down financial transaction or land registration or supply chain, and we'll make sure that you end up in the correct breakout group. Okay, and uh, enough of me for that. I am really, really pleased to have all of you guys join me for this session today. I'm very excited about it. Thank you for experimenting with me with the breakout feature. And Marina, you've agreed to kick us off. Handing over to you. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, super. So thank you, Joanna. <laughs> so hi, guys. Uh, so I am Marina. I'm Marina Petrich. I'm coming from Croatia, but I'm part of the UNDP innovation team from the Istanbul Regional Hub. And today I will present how we in UNDP, in Alfin Lab, in UNDP uh, innovation team, how we are using uh, strategic innovation, blockchain technology to tackle some of the world's most complex challenges. So this is the innovation for development, our innovation uh, uh, hub team. So as I said, I'm also co-founder of the UNDP Alternative Finance Lab that works with different innovative finance and technology projects for developments like preventative finance, predictive finance, forecast-based uh, financing, crowd investment, crowdfunding, and so on. We are also exploring how innovative technology like blockchain for financial and non-financial purposes could help us in our development work. Um, I have around four to five years of experience in blockchain sector and have created or assisted with creating around 15 blockchain projects, workshops, 
materials, products, and services. But we can leave this for some other time. Um, today, I do not have too much time to lead you through all of our projects or services or materials. I will just give you a short pitch, uh, basically an overview on how we are using blockchain to change the way how money moves in Serbia and how this was done by creating a digital ID and connecting diaspora with responsible purchases in the city of Niš from Serbia. I will also give a sentence of two trying to connect how we started because this is a project that was done four to five years ago and where we are now, how we also developed through these business models and what is currently in our plate. So I hope you will get interested. Um, so again, we are very flexible and this is just one of the overview how we are developing our project. So Serbia, I love Serbia because, and specifically this project, because this was one of our first blockchain projects and it was like a great play, play, um, playground to learn from. Uh, so we supported the work of UNDP Serbia. We designing a project that was called blockchain-based diaspora remittances in the city of Niš. There we wanted to test how blockchain can support the government while making the transfer services cheaper, more transparent, and more accessible to the wider public and of course citizen need. The city of Niš was selected as it has a huge diaspora, but also because the government there in the city was open and they wanted to play, they wanted to explore, they wanted to test out the blockchain technologies. So these were some kind of the prerequisite. We also had the support for the National Bank. UND partnered there with a company called ATEH. Uh, ATEH is a private company from Ireland. They're one of the first blockchain adopters. And we are now working with them, I think, more than four to five years. We were also working with a company called Stripe. Probably you have heard about them. Stripe is something like a PayPal. And of course, as I said before, with the National Bank. So what we did, the usual way to send remittances to Niche from diaspora that live in UK, Germany, or US was through the money transfer operators, which usually had very high fees. Sometimes they were around 10% or even 13%. And the Aspera family said that they cannot control what happens with the money once the money is sent. They didn't know for what was money uh, spent. Uh, was it for the living, some kind of expenses or for something else? And they wanted to have more control of it. So we have designed a web and a mobile app that can be used by anyone, even by the grannies that have 60 years. <laughs> where through the blockchain technology, we have wired the transfer of remittances, diaspora to families. We have reduced the transfer fees from again, 9%, 10%, and even 30% to less than 3%, which is the SDG goal. And we have created a smart app where basically you can buy your family groceries, you can buy the electricities. So you have the control of the things you are buying. And of course the government then has a control and it's complete, completely different story. Again, the National Bank of Serbia completely endorsed the program and the project, and they were really interested in expanding this to the other uh, cities in Serbia. So this is the first project. So this is some kind of the business model, how we connected diaspora with their families, how we created the smart app, where we were thinking about the end users, again, uh, the people that have more than 60 years, and how we educate them also to learn and to use this platform. This has led us to the other project. I will not speak about this project today, but this is also some kind of sort of the blockchain based slash the, uh, diaspora slash uh, impact investment platform called uh, the other bar. So the other bar is basically the chocolate, chocolate bar. And we were connecting farmers from uh, Ecuador with the families and also with the buyers from Europe through the chocolate bar. The third or the last part of the project, which we are currently now developing, basically we now finalize this project, is called the Cedar Coin. And we used the models or the elements for the, from the first project, from the Serbia project, from the other bar, from the Ecuadorian project. And we created a project that was implemented in Lebanon together with UNDIP Lebanon, where basically we're creating smart impact investment uh, platform and app that connected diaspora from Lebanon with Lebanese uh, families with, uh, and we connected this with positive impact and investment in projects from uh, uh, UNDP Lebanon portfolio. So this is the last part. Uh, I hope we will have more time to uh, discuss this later in the breakout rooms. Thank you. 
Thank you, Marina. I'm perfectly within the five minutes. Uh, so great job to you. Thank you. Uh, for anyone who's interested to learn more about the big portfolio of blockchain projects that UNDP is running there, uh, you can later on add financial transactions to your username and join the breakout group with, Mar with, with Marina. And now, um, Maurizio, I think we're going over to you. My name is Maurizio Gazzola. I'm very happy to be here with you today. I'm uh, working for the Office of Information and Communication Technology of the, of the Secretary General. And maybe not many people know, but we have a, an emerging technology solution um, uh, section that is looking at providing um, uh, technology solution to partners in the UN. And um, if you, when I will share this, the, this slide, you will see the links to the various products that we have there, uh, like the Tra Go Travel, Go Fintel, and the Land Registry system for Afghanistan. That that's what we're going to be talking today um, uh, about. Um, all we are trying to do is to provide a sustainable and affordable solution to governments in, in to, to work in their jurisdiction with these, these solutions. So we want to strengthen national capacity to gather, analyze, and disseminate data and enable tactical and strategic analysis. I will not go to too deep into this, but our model to provide this uh, technology solution is really to build a, uh, or um, adopt a, 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 a solution, make it uh, uh, maintain the, co the source code under the neutral UN blue flag and actually install it into member states. Obviously we have no mandate to look at the data that the member states administration are, are, are managing through these uh, applications. And uh, we are giving this uh, solution free of charge, but then we continue, and this is what governments are asking us, we continue to, to sustain the solution and make it sustainable for a longer term. So we support the maintenance and the development, and then we write serviceable agreement with this country who are using a solution to ensure that the, the cost to maintain the solution are actually covered on the long term. Um, but we will, we can talk, we can ask, uh, you, you can ask some question about it, maybe in the, in the, in the, breakout session and we can give you a little bit more details about that. Uh, today we're really looking at the, what we did in the, in the land registry field and uh, with, within the five minutes I've been uh, uh, you know, allocated, I will go very briefly through the, through the concepts and then we can discuss in more details in the breakout session. So we, we actually were, UN Habitat reached out to us and obviously they're reporting that land ownership disputes are one of the main key of, of unrest and you know grow, commercial pressure on land, land grabbing, involuntary resettlement and all other kind of causes are fueling conflicts. And this is where we are coming from uh, with, the, with Habitat. Uh, we see that obviously with the, in the coming decades, we're gonna have grow, growing pressure on from climate change, from population growth and, and urbanization on land. So just to, we, we initially uh, engaged with Afghanistan and their, um, and their UN, UN Habitat Office in Afghanistan, of course, the government, the Ministry of, of, of Urban Development, because 80% of properties of properties in Afghanistan's cities are actually not registered at the moment. And um, uh, the occupants have no formal ownership of, of documents. And uh, obviously the weak land management um, constraints economic and social development and uh, you, Habitat, through their program, they have surveyed more than uh, 300,000 land parcels and properties, and they wanted to have a solution to, to handle that for the government of Afghanistan. So what we built, we built Go Land Registry. Uh, it's, it's a, a blockchain-enabled digital land registry that we are uh, we have handed over to the Afghanistan Ministry of uh, Urbanization and the city of Kabul to, to start working on their records. Um, what it does, it obviously re register and secures online the land records uh, of, of the country. It, it, it has a tool to survey and do the mapping and the registration of these uh, uh, properties. And then obviously uh, um, issues land occupancy certificates. And that's where the blockchain comes in. We are hankering that certificates into the de decentralized public blockchain environment. And obviously the, the, the tool provides the ability of property owners to go online and verify automatically the, the authenticity of their certificate that they, that they own with the blockchain verification tool that I will show you if, uh, if I have a few, few more minutes. So uh, we, we are covering different modules of, uh, of the process. So the, the data ingestion, the geospatial module, the verification, we also handling, trying to 
conflicts uh, of, uh, within the within the applications. And then we are we doing beneficiary identification, and we also have a module to do the invoicing and payment because whenever there is a registration of the land, obviously there's the ability to uh, you know re record tax dues and 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 collect uh, uh, revenues from that perspective. Um, so this is a bit how it looks like. I will go very quickly through this that we can you know any you know work on uh, whatever we are going on the on the breakout and. Um, what and also we're going to talk in the breakout uh, session you, you know the, the impact on sustainability and the idea is that really you are habitat with their substantive expertise and the expertise on on, on training uh, on land reform land governance uh, administration or and and, and land management uh, expertise combine together their capacity uh, building efforts in countries with a, a concrete tool that the country can install it there in their servers and start running and obviously this tool uh, you know, will will allow for economic benefit because there we we have uh, you know the ability to to collect tax, for example, in the local land registry uh, system. But also it, it provides transparency, and that's what we we are really aiming at, uh, making sure that we have a, a very clear search certification approval process, and also blockchain technology that ensures the protection of this data uh, throughout uh, the uh, the country. So this is. Uh, the, you know, the SDGs that we impact and blockchain, you know, we are really leveraging on the distributed, decentralized and immutable features. I don't want to explain this to you because you know already about, about this. So what, what we are doing in this, in this uh, system, we have uh, at the point of completion of the land registration process, the, the occupancy certificate, the deed is hashed and stored in a public blockchain using LTO network, which is a, a provider of this uh, uh, blockchain, public blockchain. And um, the land loaners receives at the same time the, the certificate in, a, in a, a paper or an electronic form, and they can then verify the authenticity of that uh, certificate. Um, and this is how it looks like, and we can go back into more details later. Um, but the idea is really that, you know, we are providing the countries who needs uh, um, uh, land registry management improvements, either the module, the integration to the block blockchain land registry module or the full solution. So um, I'm sure we can, we can, I can answer more questions uh, on the breakout session. So I'll, I'll leave it at that at the moment. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Mauricio. It is so hard to put these projects, which are years and months in the making into five minutes. Thank you so much for trying and uh, really looking forward to continuing the discussion in breakout. Uh, Ragu from WP, if I can invite you to share your screen. Looking forward to learning more about how WP is using blockchain and supply chain. So thanks, uh, Johanna, uh, for giving me the opportunity to share some of my experiences with Blocks for Transport project. To start with, uh, uh, the Blocks for Transport uh, is uh, one of the projects which was started a couple of years back. Uh, based upon uh, an insight by the supply chain officer who was working in the Ethiopia and Djibouti, in Ethiopia country office of WFP. As uh, many of you would know, uh, WFP operates in close to 80 countries uh, across the globe. And uh, Ethiopia is one of our major, major uh, country offices. And uh, uh, we, we serve a lot of refugee population in and around Ethiopia. and. Uh, Ethiopia being a landlocked country, uh, it, de it depends on Djibouti port uh, for most of its import of the aid. So be it uh, any of the food related aid or even N NFIs. So all this has to pass through the Djibouti port to reach Ethiopia. And we have a number of warehouses spread across Ethiopia where we store and uh, uh, do the last mile distribution uh, across the country. And uh, for the, the, the major problem which, and th this has been a perpetual problem for the country office in Ethiopia, we also have a Djibouti office, which, which does operations in Djibouti for WFP. Uh, the major problem, uh, which uh, the logistical problem with the, which the country office face as of today and perpetually has been that, uh, when, whenever the goods arrive at the port of Djibouti, for them to move the goods from the port of Djibouti to the warehouse in Ethiopia, it takes close to 
20 to 25 days. And it's not because of the distance, because the distance is usually around anywhere between 200 to 300 kilometers, depending on, on the location of the warehouse uh, and the distance between the warehouse and the Djibouti port. But uh, it, it is mainly because of two reasons. And uh, th this, this are the two root causes which have been there perpetually. So the first root cause was that uh, because there, there are a lot of documentation which needs to be processed for the goods to travel. Because there, the, there are two countries. So one is the Djibouti country, which is receiving the goods, and the Ethiopia country, which, which is the final destination of the goods. And there are a lot of documentation which needs to be passed by both the customs, uh, by the shipping agents, by the clearing agents, by both the country offices. So there's a lot of back and forth of the documentation and most of this documentation is still happening in a very physical form and in a uh, uh, with, with the signature required in most of this documentation. And the second reason is uh, mostly because of the availability of trucks. Uh, and the reason for this is Djibouti being a small country, it, it, uh, there are not many trucks which are available to move the goods. And uh, you have to depend on uh, Ethiopia country for the delivery of the trucks and in Ethiopia the trucks are actually regulated by the government because the there is a lot of fertilizer which which is imported by the government from other countries and uh, trucks become the major source of movement of these fertilizer so they have uh, regulated this whole trucking industry and that that becomes one of the biggest bottlenecks for us and uh, in the blocks for transport use case, so we said we couldn't do much on the uh, regulation of the country. So we have to see how we could solve the timely availability of the documentation so that we, we could uh, cut down the, eventually cut down the timeline for the movement of the goods. So essentially uh, improving the efficiency and the scope we are looking for this project specifically is for, from between the port operations, transport and the warehouse. So we are essentially looking at this space and uh, trying to see how we can use uh, uh, how we can use digital digitization and digital technologies to cut down the uh, uh, time period and improve the efficiency in the whole logistic process. And uh, just to give you a glimpse of the whole process, so this is what we have mapped down by interacting with various stakeholders and actually mapping how the whole process works. I mean, th this map wasn't even available with the country office. They, they also never knew that there were so many steps involved uh, for clearance of the goods because they, they usually you only have, a, you in, only interact with, with your counterpart, let's say your clearing agent or a shipping agent and they do the rest of the work. But when we kind of mapped out, we found out the close to 17 documentation, which has over 40 interactions. So then we kind of said, so how, how can we kind of simplify this whole uh, problem of sharing of the documentation? We can, and the requirement being, uh, can, can we have a single source of truth through which all these organizations which have the requirement of the documentation can view this this version of the documentation and pass to each other so that the whole process uh, can be uh, faster. And that's when the whole uh, idea of blockchain came into existence and kind of said blockchain could be one of the ideal technologies for, for uh, a problem of the scale and uh, scope because you are looking at essentially multiple stakeholders uh, who doesn't have much trust with each other and uh, they have to share some of the documentation and they have to verify certain documentation they have to authorize documentation uh, and all this is is quite easily possible on a pub, uh, on a private blockchain uh, where you have limited number of uh, private entities interacting with each other in an untrusted environment. And uh, moving uh, further, I, I think I can elaborate when we get into the breakout rooms, but essentially what, what to just give you a brief of how, where we are and what we did, we kind of did a proof of concept and tested in the 
Djibouti and uh, Ethiopia uh, corridor, and we got a feedback, very positive feedback on how how the whole platform is working, and uh, we are further into the development of the second iteration of this POC. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, please join me in the breakout room where I can share the on-ground experiences of implementing the POC. Uh, thank you everyone for giving me the opportunity to share these experiences with you all. Over. Thank you, Raghu, that's great. Um, that process slide that you have there really, really scared me. I'm uh, lots of kudos to the person who had to figure out these processes. Uh, Raghu, I know you have an additional slide at the end. If you could please go to the one yeah. that has, again, the instructions on how to change your name. So now is the moment to tell us which team you'd like or which breakout room you'd like to go into.